So, thank you all for coming. Yeah, right now it's the second day of the second annual conference of the European Network of Japanese Philosophy. This is the panel 11, uh, no, I'm sorry, panel 10, Metaphysics and Philosophy of Science 1. And we are going to begin with Katsumori Makoto, who is going to speak uh, on the topic on Hiromatsu's theory of the fourfold structure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you all for coming coming to uh, to our uh, session to this session. Um, I'm going to talk about um, uh, Hiromatsu Wataru's uh, philosophy. Last year in the first uh, conference of this uh, um, uh, group, um, I gave a presentation on Hiromatsu on uh, Marx's. Uh, capital, uh, his um, uh, Hiromatsu's analysis of Marx's uh, theory of the commodity. So uh, the topic was rather limited, uh, and a specif specific um, part of uh, Hiromatsu's uh, work. Uh, this time, I'm I'm trying to um, <clears throat> um, extend uh, uh, my scope and. Um, uh, I'd like to talk about his general uh, philosophical uh, theory, uh, which is called uh, the fourfold, uh, the theory of uh, the fourfold structure. So let me read uh, my text, and um, so you, I, I hope uh, uh, you all have uh, this. Uh, handout. Um, uh, this is a, a kind of a summary um, of my uh, uh, presentation. Hiromatsu Wataru, uh, one of the leading philosophers in post-war Japan, describes the basic motif of his work as a systematic critique of the modern worldview, kindaiteki sekaikan, which he characterizes as ontologically substantialist and epistemologically bound by the subject-object schema. Inspired by the thought of Karl Marx and Marxism, as well as the philosophical implications of 20th century physics, Hiromatsu seeks to replace the modern worldview with a new philosophical orientation marked by the primacy of, of relation and what he calls the intersubjective fourfold structure. In the present study, I begin with an outline of Hiromatsu's general theory of the fourfold structure, as it is largely presented as synchronic structural analysis. That's uh, in the first section. And I then go on to examine this theory critically uh, and to show, in particular, how his overall synchronic framework tends to be um, tends to be uh, exceeded uh, by some of his conceptual motifs uh, regarding um, what may be called the dynamic displacement of meaning, uh, which is in the second section. So the first section an outline of his theory. Hiromatsu's theory of the fourfold structure is developed in his major work, Being and Meaning. So this title uh, is in English, but uh, it, uh, it has not been translated into English, uh, unfortunately. Sonzai to Imi, and other related writings. He starts this theory with an analysis of the cognitive aspect of the world in a provisional abstraction from the practical dimension. And in this um, presentation, I also largely limit myself to his account of the cognitive um, aspect uh, of the world. In Hiromatsu's view, the world consists of phenomena which are neither simply subjective nor purely objective but prior to the subject-object uh, division. 
His basic claim is that all phenomena bear meaning. That is, they appear as something. As he puts it, um, so here you have a uh, three-line uh, quote from his uh, text. The phenomenon always already appears in itself as something more than a mere sensuous given. The sound that is just heard appears intuitively as a car horn. What is seen outside the window appears as a, appears as a pine tree." Um, <clears throat> end of quote. In other words, the phenomenon is such that, quote, in showing itself, it always already showing, shows something else, unquote. Hiromatsu designates the something more or something other than the phenomenal given, Gensou Teki Shoyo, as the meaningful cognized, Imi Teki Shoshiki, or simply the meaning. Um, Hiromatsu likes to um, coin uh, uh, new words uh, uh, using complicated kanji, but uh, you, you don't have to. Uh, uh, worry so much about it. Um, we can just um, call the second factor the meaning. Taking one of the examples just cited, we can say that the phenomenal given outside the window bears the meaning pine tree. If we denote the phenomenal given by P and the meaning by P in brackets, uh, the phenomenon is structured, structured in the form of P as P in brackets. As Hiromatsu stresses, these two factors, P and P brackets, are inseparable from each other and can be what they are only in their interrelation, mutual relationship. Further, Hiromatsu continues, a phenomenon, every phenomenon, is every time a phenomenon for someone. And this someone, called the knower, nochi, is like the known, shochi, also twofold in character, or dual in character. That is, something appears to someone as someone more or someone else, or someone playing the role of someone else. This someone else, initially a concrete individual, tends to be generalized and depersonalized into the one, hito. Uh, more or less comparable to what Heidegger calls das man. Insofar as something thus appears to someone as the one, Hiromatsu de designates the someone as the knowing someone, and then the one, and the general someone, as the cognizing, Summon. So this is the twofold structure of the knowing side of the phenomena, P, large P, as large P in brackets. Uh, according to Hiromatsu, unlike the traditional notions of subject and object, knower and known are two inseparable sides of the phenomenon. Specifically, the formation of a meaning is bound up with a process through which different knowers make themselves intersubjectively isomorphic to become a cognizing someone, a general knower. In this way, the concept of intersubjectivity serves as an essential link between meaning and cognizing someone. We can now see how the twofold structures of both knower and known are combined to form what Hiromatsu calls the fourfold structure. Quote, a given presents itself as something to someone as someone, or in fully technical terms, um, here you, uh, you have a uh, two line quotation, um, a phenomenal given is valid as a meaningful cognized to a knowing someone as a cognizing someone. This is the uh, a general uh, formulation of the fourfold four structure. For example, 
something appears as a pine tree to me as a general knower, or the sound tree, the, uh, the pronounced sound of, of the word tree, bear the meaning of tree for someone as an English speaker. So it's a culturally uh, dependent. These four moments are not self-contained elements, uh, <clears throat> but uh, exists, exist only as terms of the fourfold uh, functional relationship. Yet this uh, relational character of the phenomenon has generally been missed in the substantialist philosoph philosophical tradition, including the modern uh, worldview. And Hiromatsu criticizes this um, tendency, substantialist tendency, by introducing the term reification, bushoka. Um, this is a concept, a concept he takes over from Karl Marx and seeks to extend to the general philosophical dimension. According to Hiromatsu, reification is the hypostatizing misconception is uh, what is in fourfold structure relation, such that one or more terms of this relation are taken as independent of other uh, terms or of the whole relationship. Uh, so we have come to the, uh, the reverse side of the back side of the sheet. <clears throat> A continual un uncovering and overcoming of reification, thus constitutes the leading motif of Hiromatsu's philosophy. So far, I have outlined Hiromatsu's theory of the fourfold structure, which is developed largely within the static or synchronic framework. A closer reading will show, however, that his philosophical thought is not uh, simply homogeneous, but rather contains rather uh, uh, some diverse and partly conflicting lines of thought. Specifically, he partly goes beyond the synchronic framework, opening himself to the dynamic dimension of the structuring of phenomena. And in what follows, uh, I will pursue such strands of his uh, thought, his uh, um, 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 uh, conceptions in that uh, direction. <clears throat> Section two, looking back on the starting point of Hiromatsu's theory, uh, we may notice that there is a kind of ambiguity in his formulation of the duality of the phenomenon. On the one hand, Hiromatsu claims that a phenomenon appears as something more or other than the phenomenon given. This formulation readily leads to the synchronic duality of given and meaning. On the other hand, he also says, uh, just as I quoted, a phenomenon in showing itself shows something else. This expression suggests that the phenomenon contains in itself a movement of becoming other than itself. It is this formulation, the, the latter formulation, B, that is relevant to the dynamic dimension. Next, number two, I will quote a passage in, uh, in which Hiromatsu discusses reflection on the phenomenon. So here you have a quotation, uh, a three-line uh, three quotation. For instance, when one is aware of a comma in a written text and then tries to make ex explicit the given of which one has just been aware as a comma, one is now aware of that moment as, say, a um, black spot. That is to say, one is aware of the given anew in a twofold structure as a cognized black spot, which differs from the initially cognized comma. So, as we can uh, see, uh, here, reflection not only makes explicit the duality of the phenomenon P as T uh, in brackets, but
but also produces a new dual formation, P um, primed as P primed and in brackets. Reflection on a phenomenon itself involved in the phenomenal world cannot simply be to see the phenomenon just as it is, but necessarily redetermines it in meaning. In this way, some of Hiromatsu's lines of thought suggest that phenomena, including ph uh, reflections on phenomena, contain a movement of shift or displacement in meaning. Taking now a step further than his own explicit accounts, let us examine whether such a displacement occurs in the process through which there arises a meaning common to different phenomenal givens. In Hiromasa's view, such a common meaning derives from a direct equating of different phenomena. For example, taking this pine and that cedar, uh, those are common, common trees in Japan, as similar things. Um, but uh, please be careful. Um, uh, we suppose a situation in which uh, we don't have the common meaning tree yet. And he discusses this kind of uh, equating, uh, particularly in his, reading, in his reading of Marx's analysis of the value form, uh, which is the, the topic of my uh, previous uh, presentation, uh, focusing on the equating, Gleichsetzung, of different commodities in their exchange. Let's start with two phenomena, P1, this pine, and P2, that cedar, and suppose that P2 is equated with P1 in meaning. So P1 equals P2. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, equation is uh, not uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, um, individual um, um, identity, but the similarity uh, <clears throat> in a broad sense of equation. Following Marx, by this equation, I mean the uni unidirectional relation in which P1 is de determined in meaning as equal to P2 and not the other way around unidirectional. Here we can see that P1 assumes duality, P1 as P1 in brackets, through the mediation of its reflexive relation to P2. This may be expressed as this relation, um, uh, one uh, in, 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 a, in a circle. Next, Suppose that the third phenomenon, P3, that oak, um, for example, appears and is also equated with P1. Then you have P1 equals P3. Then P1 is newly determined, this time in terms of both P2 and P3. And then you have the uh, relation to encircle. This transition from one to two indicates that the equating of P2, P3, and so on with P1 each time newly redetermines P1 in meaning. This applies not only to P1, but muta uh, mutatis mutandis, also to P2, P3, and other phenomena. In this way, the equating of different phenomena cannot be a pure reproduction of the same meaning but contains a movement that each time uh, displaces the phenomena in meaning. Uh, it should also be noted that this displacement in meaning cannot be unambiguously determined but m and may, be, may thus be called uncontrollable. Uh, the reason is that, as we have seen, reflection of on phenomena generally displaces them in meaning so that reflection on a displacement of meaning gives rise to an yet another uh, displacement in meaning. Often, however, this uncontrollable displacement of meaning tends on the surface to dis disappear. 
let's suppose that from the series of phenomena, um, <clears throat> one picks out a specific phenomenon, P uh, asterisk, and gives priority to the equations having P asterisk on the right size, uh, P, P1 equals P asterisk, and, and so on. In this case, P asterisk comes to serve as a sign. Here, uh, we, um, um, we, we get the word tree, tree, um, as a li linguist linguistic sign that exclusively represents all other phenomena in question, thus structurally stabilizing the connection of the phenomena, as in uh, equation three, circle. Here, P asterisk may be called a general signifier comparable to the general equivalent or money in Marxist theory, and P asterisk in brackets can be called the general signified. Since the sign P asterisk in, is in principle nothing more than a phenomenon among others, its introduction does not change the basic fact that the equating of phenomena displaces them in meaning. Nevertheless, this displacement tends to be concealed as a result of the above structural stabilization. For under formula three, it seems as if the meanings of P1, P2 were determined in terms of P asterisk alone, thus fixed once, once and for all without being incessantly redetermined. For example, calling some plant a tree rather than uh, grass, for example, um, each time redetermines tree uh, in meaning, but it seems as if the meaning of tree were fixed in advance. In this way, there arises the notion that the series of phenomena shares the purely self-identical, directly present meaning, which is uh, somehow comparable to uh, what Jacques Derrida calls logocentrism or the metaphysics of presence. In this presentation, having outlined Hiromatsu's theory of the fourfold structure, I have sought to extend some of his conceptual motifs to show how his philosophy tends to move beyond uh, itself concerning the dynamic dimension in which phenomena are displaced in meaning. Uh, the, the scope of this uh, analysis, however, has been provisionally limited to the known side of phenomena. As a next step, it is necessary to pursue the inquiry by explicitly taking into account the knowing side uh, and thus the intersubjective dimension of phenomena. Uh, actually, I, I, I already tried that under this uh, in uh, um, my Japanese um, a language book, uh, which is, uh, uh, the title is uh, uh, given uh, uh, at the end of the um, handout, uh, and uh, this uh, presentation um, is uh, more or less based on uh, two, for the first two sections of that book. So, thank you for listening. We still have five, six minutes for questions, if anyone has a question, commentary. Ah, okay. Just grab your voice there. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, thank you very much for the presentation, first of all. <clears throat> I think it's a very brief question. I just wanted to ask if you could say a bit more about why one and two are distinct. Phenomena, but why one and two are distinct phenomena if they are distinct phenomena? Maybe I'm getting it wrong. Because I think if P2 is similar to P3, I don't really see why one should not be identical to two in the first place. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can explain it. Okay, okay. Uh, um, that is a very um, important. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, in an equation uh, or relation one, uh, P1 is determined in meaning 
only in its relation to P2. So we abstract uh, from uh, any other uh, possible uh, relation. Uh, P, P1 might have to other phenomena. So we, are, um, we limit ourselves uh, to uh, the relation between P1 and P2. So P1 is determined uh, in this situation as something similar to P2. It has uh, no more meaning than that. Okay. Mm. But P3 can exist at the time at which 1 exists. Right? P3 uh, does not exist yet. Oh, oh okay. So it's oh. okay. Oh. Okay, right. Thanks. That's, that's a good Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, anyone have another question? So, yeah, maybe I could ask a yeah, question. Sure, sure. Uh, I, think, I find this idea of uh, displacement very interesting. How the moment you try to, well, to express the meaning of the phenomena, there is a displacement of mm -hmm. that meaning. But, uh, then I wonder if there's a self-referential problem, or if that wouldn't be a problem at all for him, if there's not a skeptical consequence that mm. also this displacement of meaning mm. is, is already, this way of conceiving it is already a displacement. Or if, in, in a sense, if that should lead us to that sort of skepticism, like we are always displacing meaning anyway, even when you are, we are talking about displacement. Yes. Um, uh, Actually, so that's a, that's a question to me too. Uh, uh, for me, uh, rather than to for Hiromatsu, because uh, he, uh, he uh, uh, didn't formulate uh, oh, this question uh, this way. So this mm -hmm. is my uh, um, uh, extension of his, mm -hmm. of his thought. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm ready to accept that uh, self-referentiality. So uh, the notion of dis 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 displacement is is itself subjective uh, displacement. Ah, good. <laughs> so, no more questions. So great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.